Hi, I'm Mason, and this is my final Dante project. I have two paintings here because this one was actually, uh, you can see there's, there's a lot of issues with it, but <laughs> um, I used oil base, and so it didn't really have time to uh, dry like it should before I was doing the, like this was supposed to be an earthscape and then a hellscape at the bottom of the hourglass. The bottom of the hourglass and the hellscape got all jumbled up because the oil wasn't dry when I tried painting it. Same with some of the details in this. Uh, so then I went and I used acrylics and I just redid it with acrylics. So this is nice and dry. This is still completely wet right now. Um, <clears throat> but I still wanted to show it. This one is kind of symbolizing um, the control in, from a theological perspective that you know, Satan and God have over things. So that it's not necessarily Satan and God, it's just a angelic and demonic figure that both have a side of the hourglass. And if you can see, there's like a screw going through it right into both of their faces kind of, and they each sort of have the ability to kind of flip it and send people, you know, from heaven to hell or from hell to heaven, whatever. Um, this one gets more complex. <clears throat> I'll read you first. So this is the Leviathan, which is super prominent in almost all Mideast cultures. The Egyptians have Tannin, which is like a sea dragon. The Enuma Elish has Tiamat, which is a dragon of destruction and chaos. The Bible has Leviathan and Rahab, and these all kind of amalgamate into the symbolism that's very clearly um, representative of where you go when you die. It's probably all based off of a crocodile, but um, takes the form of dragon and other supernatural things. I wrote a poem about it here, so I'm gonna read the poem and then I'll explain the painting. <clears throat> poem is called Leviathan and Sheol. Lying prone on a dismal seabed throne, Dominion over salty pit and such. Anguish lingers down there where spear can't pierce the thick and slimy scales around eyes so fierce. Reeds for a crown, slick green belly to the ground, snout buffing the bridge from water to sky. Fallen home, home to the fallen from high. Plunge with lightning from firmament down to murky depths, dark, devoid, and destitute. His place is here beneath the hook and spear, not up there in air like a phantom dove, brooding over the primordial mists, tending dew-kissed gardens at first light, symbol of fright, no sight, fathoms below, where earth-bound creatures, soul-tethered can't go, and closing in on those cut off from grace, displaced from kingdom high for sins to cry, this fate is worse than nothing. Nothing ends. So I'm going to post this poem with, um, I did a side by side and I actually did like my own little um, line notes for what each line means and the symbolism and stuff. It's all related to Mideastern theologies. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so um, as Northrop Fry said, you know, when when Jesus dies in the New Testament, goes to hell for three days and comes back alive, it parallels Jonah going into the belly of the Leviathan for three days and then being spit out. We often say Jonah and the whale, but um, the original word that is used is uh, <clears throat> Greek. I have it in my notes. Yeah, ketos magus, which is a Greek translation of essentially the Leviathan and even the Tyndale Bible uses the word Leviathan in the 1500s so um, I think it's clear that <clears throat> the Bible in Isaiah, Psalms, Ezekiel, um, Revelations, Job, all of these are referencing uh, the Leviathan which is um, symbolic of where you go when you die. It's essentially where your soul goes. It's hell. Um, so what we have here is you'd enter hell from the top. Who brings you there? The angel of, I don't know, you could call it the, the angel of death, um, or one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse who rides the pale horse. 
but he's the caller of souls, just like uh, this was pretty normal tradition, um, even going into, <clears throat> well, Revelations, of course, but then even going into the Middle Ages, you have the medieval morality poems like Everyman, where death is sort of God's color of souls. Um, so he brings them here. Um, you have an angel of wrath blowing a trumpet. In the center, we feature a mix of Christ and the Antichrist. So he's got the Book of Life, but he's also got this flaming sword to cut people down. Um, and he's got black eyes because he's not, not necessarily good or bad. He's, he's both. He's Christ and the Antichrist. We have a bunch of demons down here. We've got a demon pouring out a bucket of blood. A demon reading sort of a list of people who are damned. A demon with a pitchfork. This demon dumping out stuff on top of a pile of bodies. <coughs> um, all these skeletons in sort of a desert scape are um like from ezekiel the the dry bones um and then here we have the leviathan of course and he's sucking up all the souls which are going to go into his belly and he's going to jump in this ocean back here and go as deep as he can and your soul is trapped in him for eternity we have a few creatures from uh <laughs> revelations just because i wanted to add them in that's what the half on land, half on water, a lion with horns uh, thing is, and the dragon with seven heads and um, <clears throat> stuff like that. But what features in the center sort of of everything is a dove. And this is supposed to be the tree of life, which is it's bending but not breaking, but it does break up here on the branch where God is and the dove symbolizes God because all throughout Christian theology God is symbolized as a dove and also in Milton's Paradise Lost he talks about God um, as he sat as dove-like brooding over the mists and that's uh, that was how he imagined God so I just figured I would kind of add God like that and I'll give you a close-up of the <clears throat> of the painting here let's see So that's that one, and then uh, <clears throat> this is sort of my heaven and hell hourglass thing, which is still pretty wet to the touch, so I can't really do anything with it, but yeah, that's my Dante project. <laughs>